Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about three wall rooms. There's a lot of confusion still out there about the types of walls that we need in our room, the function of those walls, how do they work in critical listening environments for noise, for heat and cold, and all of those issues, absorption, diffusion. So let's walk through this example. I hope this helps a little bit more because I'm seeing so much confusion on calls and room forms that it prompted me to put this uh, short video together really quick to help. We have three walls in any critical listening environment. We have the BTU wall, which is actually governed by city, county, state codes. You have to have so much insulation. It has to have so much R value. It has to have all these restrictions to comply with the weather for that particular region of the country. So we're going to call that our BTU wall. That's going to be dealing with heat and cold transfer, okay? Barrier wall, we all know from our videos, is all about noise transmission. And then we have the treatment wall, which is absorption and diffusion. Those are all three separate structures, should be, in any critical listening environment. We'll talk about applications later. But what you have to realize is that each wall is a separate physics. And I think here's where the problem is. If, if I've got my finger on, on the problem, I think this is it. Each wall has a separate function. Each wall is different physics. Vibrational acoustics is always noise transmission. We're reducing the vibration signature of the noise from source to receiver. We do that by uh, building a barrier. So it's all about vibration. And then we have the airborne energy, which is absorption and diffusion inside the room, and then thermodynamics for the BTU wall. So all three walls, technically, if we're going to be doing it right, should be separate structures. And then they should be all separated by airspace. Now, let's look at applications, okay? A lot of times, if this is the BTU wall, and this is the barrier here, a lot of times we can combine those. We can put the barrier and the BTU wall together. Save space, maybe, depending on noise issues. So. I think that's where the confusion lies. So I wanted to break this down into separate structures with separate physics and separate functions. And then now for the application, a lot of times we can take the BTU and the barrier and combine them. A lot of times we can't. We can never combine the absorption and diffusion. That wall has to be separate from all the others. People do it all the time. People use BTU walls for hot and cold as sound absorbing walls. You can't do that. Wrong rate and level, wrong physics, wrong design. So you have to separate these. You have to separate their function and you have to apply their function to deal with all kinds of issues that you're facing. We build new rooms. Our noise floors are 30 dB SPL. Take a reading in your room. See what your room is, 50? 45, if you're lucky. It takes a lot of design to get that low noise floor with barrier technology. So we're not going to be able to use a wall that's designed to keep our room warm and cold and keep the elements out. We're not going to be able to use that wall to stop noise most of the time. We can use the noise wall or the barrier wall in conjunction with the BTU wall a lot of times in the same space, depending on where you're at. We just did a, a church in Alaska, minus 50. Well, I don't know what the BTU wall is up there, but it's got to be 12, 15, 24 inches thick. Okay. Now, when we're dealing with a wall that thick, maybe there's a place for it in the treatment of absorption and diffusion. I don't know. You have to run numbers and, and do calculations. But for purposes of this discussion, 
for clarity so that we have understanding, they're really separate functions. They're separate walls. And that's how I want you to think about it. Now, if your design ends up being different, so be it. But I want you to start thinking about three separate walls in any critical listening environment because they're three separate functions. And I think that'll help us go a long way to uh, moving designs forward and, and understanding and conversational competency. How's that? So that's how I want you to start thinking. I want you to start thinking in any critical listening room, mix, mastering, theater, two channel, it doesn't matter, vocals, we still have all of these issues. Now, a lot of times these rooms are within structures that have these issues addressed, at least the BTU wall issue, okay? Remember, the best room is no room at all. So look what we got to go through to create a critical listening environment. Basically, we have to build a structure that satisfies so many variables that you have to, you know, be aware of the function of each surface area and each wall. Three wall rooms. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.